Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Ali. I'm a final year medical student at Cambridge University, and this is the second in our video about evidence-based revision tips. And today we're gonna to be talking about spaced repetition and how you can apply it to your own study routine. If you haven't seen the previous video, which will be linked up there and here and everywhere else, uh, please do watch that first. That is about active recall, and active recall is by far the most important thing you can be doing right now to make your studying much more efficient. This video is gonna be about spaced repetition, which is probably the second most important thing you could be doing. I've put timestamps to everything we're gonna talk about in the description below, along with a load of links so you can follow those as you like. And now here's the structure of the video because everyone loves a well-structured video. Firstly, we're gonna introduce this concept of spaced repetition and I'll be sharing with you a little bit of the evidence behind it. We're not gonna go overboard on the evidence because to be honest, a lot of the stuff around spaced repetition is quite intuitive. Secondly, I'm gonna be giving you some tips as to how you can incorporate spaced repetition into your study techniques and into your life generally. And thirdly, I'm gonna be talking to you about my own personal magical spaced repetition spreadsheet system uh, that I've been using for the past few years and that when I was using like properly, got me really, really good marks in my Cambridge exams. So yeah, that's the structure of the video. Feel free to jump around with the timestamps. Let's start by talking about spaced repetition and the evidence behind it. What is spaced repetition? Uh, spaced repetition is, as the name suggests, where you space your repetition of particular subjects over a period of time. It is in contrast to cramming, which is a very popular revision strategy, but as we all probably intuitively know, when you cram for a test the next day, you can probably remember quite a lot of it because it's like in your short-term memory, but by, you know, maybe the next day or the, or the following day, you've completely forgotten all of it. So cramming is sort of not ideal if we're talking about retaining stuff in our long-term memory. The idea behind spaced repetition is that instead of cramming things into a single day, we spread out our revision over time and we review topics, ideally by active recall, at particular intervals. Basically, the reason why it works is because of something called the forgetting curve. And that's something that's been around in the psychology literature since the 1800s. And that's something that we can all probably intuitively experience for ourselves. Um, you've probably had that feeling whereby, you know, you revise a th something and then you look at it a week later and it's like you've just forgotten all of it. So you're like, what was the point of revising that? And you have to repeat it, repeat, repeat again. That's the forgetting curve in action. It's the idea that over time we forget things at an exponential rate. Sort of like, you know, radioactive decay and half-life if, you, if you're into A-level physics or chemistry. The important thing about the forgetting curve and how we can take advantage of it is that every time we interrupt the forgetting curve, it then takes longer for us to forget something. So let's say today I studied the anatomy of the upper limb and then I reviewed it again tomorrow. I have interrupted the forgetting curve. So while previously I might have forgotten half of it by tomorrow, now I'm only going to forget 25% of it by the following day. And if I then review it again three days later, I go back to 100%, now it's going to take me even longer to forget it. And the idea is that the more times we do this, the more spaced out our repetition becomes, the more likely we are to encode all of this information into our long-term memory. So now we're never going to forget that the radial nerve supplies the posterior compartment of the arm because we've repeated it so many times over such a spaced interval that the forgetting curve no longer applies to that piece of knowledge or understanding. So yeah, that's not particularly groundbreaking. A lot of us already do this anyway. We know that we won't just remember something if we study it once. So we kind of make our revision timetables and we think, right, I'm going to revise topic one in chemistry AS on that day and then I'll revise it again a week later and then a week later. That's not particularly controversial. Obviously, spacing your repetition is better than cramming. The thing that I personally take home from the forgetting curve is is actually that, you know, the, the intervals at which we space things apart. There is a phenomenon in the psycho psych psychology literature, I'll link some studies below, but I won't bother explaining it in depth. Basically, it's, it's the idea that the harder your brain has to work to retrieve something from it, the more stronger that information gets encoded. So the idea behind spatial repetition is that you allow your brain to forget some of the information, such that when you revise it again, it's not mindless repetition, it's actually taking you some brain power. And the more brain power it takes, the more you've forgotten, the harder your brain has to work and therefore the more strongly that information gets encoded. Why is this relevant to our own studies? It, it's relevant because it means that we have this kind of idea of starting off spacing things at like a narrow interval and then spreading that interval out over time. So like I said in my example, anatomy of the upper limb, let's do it today, let's do it tomorrow, three days later, a week later, and then a month later. We've repeated it five times, we've spaced these repetition sessions, we've allowed ourselves to forget a little bit of, of the information in between the intervals, such that when we revise the topic, ideally with active recall rather than just rereading, it takes brain power to recall this information. Therefore, by the end of it, we have retained so much more than if we'd spent five times you know, as much time on the first day just trying to cram the anatomy of the upper limb. So that's one point about spaced repetition. I think a more interesting point that I've been using a lot in my own studies is that actually the evidence suggests that even if even if in the same study session like in the same day of work you space stuff out rather than kind of do it in chunks the evidence suggests that that's probably a more efficient technique in terms of retaining information there's an interesting study from 2011 where they got four groups of students to try and learn words and their translations in swahili uh, one group of them only studied the words once 
uh, and these were their results. And as you can see, they didn't do very well. That's kind of what you'd expect if you saw like a vocab list of French words and English translations. You probably wouldn't remember much of it if you just saw it once. The second group saw each word once and then had to recall each word once and then were tested. And this is their performance. So as you can see, you know, just recalling a word once, as we've already established in the previous video, active recall is pretty great, increases your performance massively compared to, you know, just studying it. The third group also recalled the words that they, that they knew, but immediately after each recall, they had the recall of the same word. So they recalled the same words kind of multiple times before moving on. And these are their results. So as you can see, not much difference there uh, between just the guys that recalled it once. But most interestingly, the final group that saw each word and then recalled it, but then had a gap of a few words before recalling it again. So, you know, they, they repeated their recall of it, but they spaced their repeated recall of it in the same study session. These are their results. So these guys did exactly the same amount of work. They did exactly the same thing. Uh, they studied for the same amount of time as the people in group three, the guys that kind of recalled in a, in a group and then found another word and recalled it in a group. But they've got a staggering improvement in their score, up to 80%. It's exactly the same work, like literally exactly the same work. The only difference is that it was spaced out relative to group three. And that gives you a difference of an extra 50% in exam performance. And like, I don't know about you, but like if, if I could restructure my revision in a way that I was doing the same thing as I've always done, but just kind of doing it in a slightly different order, and I could get such a massive performance boost, I would be doing it all day and I'd be shouting it from the rooftops, personally. So what does this experiment actually tell us? Well, firstly, I think it tells us about the power of active recall, but hopefully we already knew that because we'd seen the previous video about active recall. So the conclusion I draw from this is that in a given day, let's say I've done five topics of, you know, for preparing for my OSCEs or, or whatever, five topics. What I previously would have done is I think what a lot of us do when, when it comes to revision is that we do one topic in the morning for like, for like two hours, then we're done. And then the next one, and then and the third one, the fourth one, the fifth one. And we, might, and, and we might use space repetition to repeat it like a day later, a week later, a month later. But the point is within that study session, within that day, we've kind of just done the topic once. And I think the thing that I take from, from this particular study and from similar ones like it is that there is a lot to be gained by just going over the stuff, like testing yourself on it, maybe like two hours later. Let's say you've done topic one and topic two. Just before starting topic three, you know, just ask yourself, I wonder how much I can write down of what I remember from topic one, or I wonder if I can answer the, the recall questions that I wrote for myself for topic one. I know I'm gonna be doing it tomorrow anyway, because, you know, part of my space repetition method, uh, and three days later and, and a week later. But, you know, let me just see at the end of the day what I can recall. And the results of this study and similar ones seem to suggest that if even doing that in the same day, the same study session really boosts your marks. So yeah, that's pretty much spaced repetition in a nutshell. Firstly, it's the idea that obviously, you know, spacing your repetition over a period of time is better than cramming. That's uncontroversial. It's not particularly groundbreaking. But secondly, it's this idea that even like spacing stuff out within the same day, within the same study session has the potential to really, really boost your marks. And if it does have that potential, even if it ends up not being a 50% improvement, because to be honest, that's it's pretty, you know, pretty amazing. Even if it ends up not being that great, it still has the potential to improve our scores and it improves our long-term understanding and retention of the topic. So I think it's something that maybe we should be practicing to do. So practical advice, maybe at the end of the day, ask yourself, what have I learned today? You know, go over your, your active recall questions, like write down on one page, you know, what is everything I can remember in the form of a spider diagram from this subject with the book closed. And I think that might be a really efficient way to get a lot more information into your brain in a shorter space of time. So that's a quick introduction to space repetition. Uh, let's now go into the meat of this video. And that's what a lot of you guys have been requesting in the comments. And that's tips on how to apply space repetition to your own studies. And you know, a lot of you are asking how I built my own space repetition spreadsheet that you might've seen in the IBSMO video. At this point, I'm not gonna be citing any studies or any evidence for what I'm saying. This is purely my own opinion. This is purely the stuff that's worked for me. In my second and third year at university, I really actively, specifically applied active recall and space repetition. And it was only those two years that I did it like really, really well, like really anally, um, kind of just focusing my revision technique around that. And those were the two years that I re did really, really well in my Cambridge exams. In other years, I've kind of, I fell by the wayside a bit. I was like, oh, whatever, I, I'm quite tempted to just kind of reread my textbook or highlight stuff because it's less cognitively demanding. And like, I still passed my exams, I did all right, but I didn't do amazingly. And obviously my N equals one personal experience is not a legit scientific study. So I think my advice to you guys would be that don't take my word for this as being gospel. Um, maybe try these techniques in your own in your own studies, in your own life. If they work for you, then fantastic. And if they don't work for you, then you've just wasted 20 minutes watching a video. I apologize, that's time you're never gonna get back. But yeah, cool, let's talk about specific techniques, things that you can do to apply spaced repetition to your own studies and to your own life. First thing to mention is flashcards and Anki is the app that I personally prefer to use. And as I mentioned in the previous video, I've used this to memorize uh, specific facts. 
like stuff like in anatomy and pharmacology, but also quotes for essays. And I busted out like, you know, quotes from John Paul II and St. Augustine in my, in my ethics essays. And the examiner seemed to love that sort of thing. It's quite nice when you can like, you know, put a few fancy quotes into an essay. And I used Anki to memorize those. I won't talk about it in depth. I've talked about it in the previous video. It's just a flashcard app that does active recall and spaced repetition and kind of incorporates this into the software. Point number two isn't really a practical technique. Uh, it's more of a mindset shift. And it's something that I've applied to, to my own life ever since I discovered this power of spaced repetition. Um, and you can use it to, to learn a lot of things in quite a small amount of time, kind of overall. And the technique is simply that all you have to do is practice a little bit each day for ages, and then you just get really good at something. And everyone who's done a musical instrument knows this. They know that, you know, practicing for 10 minutes a day for a week is far better than practicing an hour on the weekend or two hours on the weekend. But the way our brain works, the, 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 the way we encode information, it tends to be, people say, when we sleep. So we kind of do a little bit, we, we get a bit of muscle memory, and then when we sleep, these connections get solidified, and then we do it again, we find we're a bit better at it. So my point is that once you appreciate the power of space repetition, you can apply it to everything in your life, not just to, to your studies or to your revision. I've personally applied this to piano, guitar, graphic design, web design, video editing, coding, like quite, quite a few different things in addition to like my academic work. And I find it's really, really useful because it makes the amount of improvement you get for every unit of time much greater than it would be with other methods where you kind of spend ages doing one thing or spend ages doing another thing. And that's what I previously used to do. So yeah, point number two is, is simply about, you know, appreciating the power of space repetition, consistency and patience effectively, doing a little bit each day and improving. It's not particularly groundbreaking. I know everyone who's tried to learn a musical instrument probably knows this, but I just thought I'd share it with you guys because I've had a lot of messages like YouTube comments and Instagram DMs, people being like, oh, how do you do so much stuff? What, what's your secret? The secret is, you know, just a little bit each day and being consistent has a, a staggering potential to just let, let you gain so many skills that you would be so glad for in the long term. And finally, let's get to the meat of this. Let me talk to you about my magical spaced repetition spreadsheet system. Uh, so I used this in second and third year, did really well in my exams, and I'm using it in my final year, and I hope that I'll do quite well in my exams uh, using this method. Basically, the way you do it is that you make a spreadsheet. Um, I prefer using Google Sheets rather than Excel. Google Sheets is easy to load. You can download the app on your phone. That means anywhere you are, whether you're, you're like on the bus or on the toilet or in the library, you can update your magical spreadsheet. If it's a .xls file on your desktop and you have to double click it and it takes an agonizing amount of time to load, that just adds too much friction to this. So I prefer to use Google Sheets. So that's my that's my advice, use Google Sheets for this. So what do you actually do with this spreadsheet? So what you do is, is that you make a different sheet for each of your subjects. So it might be biology, chemistry, physics, maths, English lit if you're doing A-level, uh, or it might be like anatomy, biochemistry, physiology, pathology, microbiology, all, all of this stuff. If you're a medical student or, you know, apply this to your own life, obviously. And the idea is within each kind of broad subject, in the A column of the spreadsheet, you're writing down a list of every single topic in that, in that subject. Now at this point, I just want to talk about the importance of scoping your subject is how a friend put it to me recently. And like, like actually knowing what's on your syllabus. I've spoken to a lot of students, students over the past few years, you know, pr helping them prepare for their medicine exams and all of this stuff. And it's pretty astounding how few students like know their course inside out, like know what topics there are in their AS and A2 chemistry or know exactly what topics there are in biology. I think that's, that's one thing that if you haven't done already that you definitely should be doing, like spend as long as it takes, like even if it takes a whole day, just like, you know, writing down a list of all of the different topics and like don't follow the specification. The specification, I, I absolutely hate specifications. They're just like verbosely worded. It's like, you know, 1.1.003 to be able to appreciate the importance of the nitrogen cycle. You know, really the, the topic is just the nitrogen cycle. But I've seen a lot of people kind of like use the specification as a way of revising. Personally, I've never found that particularly helpful. My personal tactic is to look through exam papers because while you can't really trust the specification, you can absolutely trust the past papers. And if the past papers, you know, if you can categorize things into, for example, physics, if you can categorize them into electricity, mechanics, nuclear, waves, and you realize that that's all that comes up, which is pretty much all that comes up in physics for the BMAT. And that's how I kind of categorized it. I just looked at all the past papers and realized, oh wow, there's only four categories. That's how I personally like to structure my own, my, my subjects rather than relying on specification. But anyway, however you do it, however you scope your subject, the point is you now have a list of all the topics that you need to revise uh, down one column of the spreadsheet. Basically the way the system works, it's, it's very simple. Every time you study a topic, and you actively recall stuff from that topic, then you're allowed to write the current date in the, in the next column along in the spreadsheet. So in this example, today I did the abdominal exam and therefore I'm gonna write today's date in the box. Now let's say tomorrow I do the abdom abdominal exam again. I, you know, reread re my notes on it if, I, if I'm feeling particularly lazy. If I'm feeling efficient, I would actively recall, I would be using my own questions. 
Uh, and then once I've done that, then I put tomorrow's date in the box. So the idea is that over time, I'm kind of building up this list of repetitions of my subject. So I'm gonna show you an example of the spreadsheet that I used in my third year when I was doing psychology. Uh, I referenced this in the Ibs Mo video, the collaboration that we did, which was really good fun, and that you should watch if you haven't seen. Um, and loads of people asked, you know, can you tell us specifically about how you made the spreadsheet? So this is how it worked. I've got a list of essays that I want to learn down one side for each of the three different like papers within psychology. And over time, I've built up this, this kind of repetition date. So like once I've read the essay and kind of like drawn my spider diagram for it, I'd, I'd write the date. And I think something really useful is to color code each box based on how good your recall was of that subject. So for example, if I knew it very, very, very well, I would color it green. If I, did, if I didn't really know it at all, I'd color it red. If I sort of knew it, maybe 50%, I'd color it yellow. And the nice thing about Google Sheets is that you've got like, you know, gradations of red, orange, yellow, like halfway through. So it gives you a very visual representation of what are my weak areas, what are my strong areas. And that's the system. It's 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 simple, but it works really well. The idea is just that, you know, over time you mark these down and then as, as time progresses, these dot off red and then they go be yellow and then they start getting green. Then you realize, oh wow, I know everything in the subject because they've all been marked green. And I know I know it because the only reason I'm allowed to mark a date on it is if I've actively recalled information from this topic. It's not just, have I read this chapter in the textbook? Have I read over my notes? That is a total waste of time. The important thing is, have I recalled it? Have I tried to write down as much as I know about the topic? Have I answered my active recall questions for that particular topic? So yeah, that's the system. It's quite simple. You know, topics down one side and then all the times you revise the topic and actively recall it, please, uh, <laughs> along, along the rest of it. And then you color code it based on how good you were at actively recalling the information. Here are some more tips on how to use this effectively. Firstly, please start with the stuff that you don't know. I think a very common thing is like, oh, you know, it's time for me to study maths. I'm gonna open chapter one of my textbook and read and do problems that I know I already can do. I used to do this with chemistry. I was like, oh, you know, I wanna revise chemistry. Like open the CGP revision guide, fundamentals of chemistry, the periodic table. Oh yes, you know, I know the periodic table song. Why don't I sing the song in my head and try and tick off the, you know, it was all stuff that I knew I already knew. And yet I was doing it because I was like, right, it's time to revise chemistry. I wanna do what's easy. Please, that's, that's a bad thing to do. And these days, if I ever find myself doing that, I like mentally kick myself in the head uh, and say to myself, no, I'm gonna do a topic that I know I don't know. One thing I like to do is that I like to start from the final topic in the textbook and work my way back up to the first. And this is especially true of lecture notes at university. Uh, you find that, you know, you become very, very familiar with the contents of like lecture one and two and three. But like lecture 13, 14, 15 out of like maybe 18, you're like a bit like a bit shaky on those. And it's so tempting when thinking, I'm gonna revise anatomy, to just open the book to the first page. I think that's a terrible idea. In fact, I think it's a better idea to just open the book at a random page or the last page and work your, and work your way back um, because that encourages you to tackle topics that you already don't know. And as we've established, the more effort it takes you to learn a topic, the more effort it takes you to actively recall, the stronger that information is gonna get encoded over time. So that's tip number one. Uh, don't study topics you already know, like focus on the stuff that you've marked as a red or that you haven't done at all. Secondly, I think it's, the, the mindset that works for, for this kind of spreadsheet system, at least for me, is that I take a very sort of scattershot approach for it. Each day I try to fill in as many boxes as I possibly can. Because my reasoning is, it's far better for me to blitz through a topic and then try and actively recall questions and then do that same thing for like 10 different topics over time than it is for me to kind of spend 10 hours focused on a single topic, which I might have been more tempted to do in, in, in previous days. And I think that's something that a lot of us do. We, 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 we focus on like, I wanna get really good at this topic before moving on. Whereas I think this kind of the scattergun approach with the spreadsheet is that, you know, I know that I'm not gonna get good at this topic, but that's not the point. The point is I'm gonna be repeating this topic like eight times before my exam comes around. I wanna just kind of, kind of blitz it, like write my recall questions, like actively recall, make my brain work and then move on to the next thing, and then move on to the next thing after that. And this is actually another technique, it's sort of in the literature, sort of with evidence, it's called interleaved practice. You do a little bit of one thing, and then, you know, before you quite have mastery of it, you switch tasks to something else, and then you switch tasks to, task to something else. And they've got loads of evidence from like sporting studies where they've like analyzed hockey players and like coaching methods and stuff. And they do practice at one thing and then like the players get slightly annoyed because they were just getting good at that particular move before the coach moved them, moved them on to something completely different. But you realize over time that your results improve so much more if you take this approach where you kind of do it a bit, recall it a bit, move on, do it a bit, recall a bit, move on, do it a bit, recall a bit, move on, rather than right, I'm gonna do, and I'm gonna get really good at the fundamentals of chemistry before moving on to the next topic. Instead, maybe more like, right, I'm gonna spend 20 minutes on fundamentals of chemistry. I'm just gonna write down a list of all the questions I can think of. I'm gonna go through them, through the questions in my head with a book closed, try and answer the questions, right, let's move on to topic two. And in fact, 
to be honest, at GCSE and A level, you can pretty much go through the entire the entire textbook slash CGP revision guide slash Let's revision guide or whatever you're using. You can do that in the matter of a few hours if you take a very sort of scattergun like I don't care about the detail. I just want to make my brain work to recall information. Um, so yeah, I've I've ranted a bit about this. I, I feel quite strongly about this about this. I think that it's more efficient for us if we don't like focus single-mindedly on particular topics, and if we don't treat our, our revision as a block of chemistry and then a block of this other topic in chemistry and then a block of that instead kind of do more of a sort of combining everything together like a bit of this bit of that bit of this bit of that and then repeat the next day and i think over time that builds up a stronger knowledge base and an understanding base and this is not quite evidence-based obviously this is my own personal opinion please take it with a pinch of salt but you know maybe try it out for a few days you know doing this thing of i'm just going to blitz through a lot of topics uh quantity rather than quality in a way um, and I find, actually, yeah, that's quite a good buzzword, quantity rather than quality. It's more important to get through a large number of topics than to get through a small number to of, of topics in a lot of detail, because often that detail doesn't really help us. And it's the active active recalling that's really building the connections in our brain. But yeah, I think it's all about the scattergun approach. With the spreadsheet method, try and fill in as many boxes as you can in a given day, rather than, I really want to get that box green before moving on. So yeah, that is effectively how I do my revision. I use my magical spaced repetition spreadsheet system. I have it on Google Sheets so I can fill it out wherever I am. Uh, I use active recall after, you know, I answer my list of questions that I've written for each topic uh, in my head or out loud or on paper or whatever I'm feeling like. And then once I've actively recalled it, I mark the date and I color code how easy it was to recall. And this gives me a nice kind of pictorial representation of each of my subjects, each of the topics within those subjects and how well I know those things. So I know exactly what to focus my, my attention on in, in future revision sessions. Finally, I'm going to talk about why I personally don't like the idea of a, re a revision timetable. I know this is blasphemy. I know a lot of other re revision YouTubers who are doing absolutely smashing it and doing really, really well, fully endorse the idea of revision timetables. What I'd say to that is, if it works for you, then that's absolutely fantastic. I don't think it works for me. I've tried it. Basically, my issue with revision timetables is that you're expecting yourself to know how much you need to revise a particular topic. So like back in the day when I used to make revision timetables, I used to be like, right, on on this day, I'm going to do that, that, and that topic. On the next, I'm going to do that and that, blah, blah, blah. blah. I'd be incorporating space repetition into this. Like I'd obviously repeat topics, but you know, my problem was that I'd, I'd, I'd be repeating topics that I didn't need to repeat, or I wouldn't be spending as much time on topics that I did need to repeat. So ultimately I realized that actually revision is, is a very fluid process. We all find different things difficult. We all progress at slightly different rates. So if we make a timetable two months before our, our exam, where we're telling ourselves, right, each day I want to stick to this topic, that topic, and kind of regiment it like that. I don't think that works for me. Instead, as I said, I prefer to see revision as more of a fluid thing. And that's why I really like my spreadsheet system, because it doesn't give me any compulsion to do particular topics each day. All I have to do is each morning, I'm right, right, I'm going to do some revision for section A or my paper one in psychology. Let me look through my list and see which of these essays have the red mark by them. Let me do those. Okay, perfect. Those are done. Now let's look at the yellows. Yeah, let's spend some time on those. And, you know, let's just make sure I still know the greens. Let me look at one of the greens. That sort of thing. I wouldn't have been able to plan that in advance. And I think if I had tried in my third year to plan out my revision in advance like that, I wouldn't have done nearly so well as I ended up doing. So yeah, that's why I don't like revision timetables. That's why these days I never make a revision timetable. I use my spreadsheet and each day I decide, okay, what is the stuff that needs working on? What's the stuff that's gonna make my brain work the hardest? Because that's what's gonna get me the biggest improvement in my mark rather than, you know, a timetable. But hey, everyone has their own thing. Um, if you like timetables, then by all means, go for it. I personally don't. If you're finding that your timetable doesn't really help or that you're not really sticking to it, as was the case for me when I was in, in, in secondary school, then maybe try out this method, use the spreadsheet system, use whatever system you like, but don't feel like you have to structure your revision in a regimented fashion around a timetable. It doesn't work for everyone. Okay, that brings us to the end of the video. I really hope this has been useful. Um, we've talked less about the evidence in this video than we did in the previous video. The previous video, like objectively, I think is really, really, really good if you wanna learn how to revise effectively because active recall is the most important thing and because there are a lot of interesting studies around it and because active recall is semi-unintuitive, like we all prefer to reread, highlight, underline, make notes. With space repetition, it's a bit, it's a bit different. It's a bit harder to make like a, a video on this saying that, oh, this is gonna change, this is gonna blow your mind completely because we all sort of know that space repetition works. We know that cramming doesn't really work very well. We know that it's good to repeat stuff. And I guess it's reasonable to, to say that, yeah, I'll repeat it a week later and then a month later, and then I'll, I'll kind of know it better. But I hope that 
Either way, you know, if you've got to this point, this video has given you some value. What have we talked about? We've talked about firstly, an introduction to spaced repetition. We've said that obviously spacing repetition is better than cramming, but we've said that importantly as well, within a single study session, maybe spacing your repetition might be a good idea as well because that improves your recall according to the studies. Secondly, we talked about some ways in which you can incorporate spaced repetition into your study routine and your life. We talked about Anki very briefly. I'll link it down below if you want to check it out. And we talked about this kind of mindset, the mindset shift that is a good way of learning anything, not just like academic stuff that, you know, just a little bit, each day is far better than focused mass crammed practice, which a lot of us are very kind of inclined to do, including myself. And every time I catch myself doing that, I think, no, it's all about space repetition. You know, I just need to do 10 minutes of sight reading practice a day. And that's so much better than doing two hours on the weekend. And finally, I shared with you my own personal spreadsheet, magical space repetition system. I call it magical. It's not that magical. It's really, really simple, but like it gives you a really nice pictorial representation of where you are for each of your subjects. And I think that's really, really important and it works very well for me. Obviously this particular spreadsheet system is not based on evidence. There's no one has done a study on, you know, whether a revision timetable works better than having the spreadsheet system. It just works for me. And if it works for you, then fantastic. If it doesn't, then I'm sorry, you wasted your time. Uh, please go back to your timetable and hopefully you'll smash your exam. I wish you the very best of luck. So yeah, thank you so much for watching this video. Uh, if you're new to the channel, thank you very much for subscribing as well. This channel seems to have been sort of growing at an alarmingly amazing rate like these past few days ever since the previous revision video came out. And of course, since the Ibsmo collaboration. Thank you, Ibs, for that. Um, so yeah, thank you so much for subscribing if you're here. Uh, if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, maybe please consider doing so. We've got a couple more, more videos coming about, about like motivation, productivity, how I make notes, even though I don't like making notes, little apps on my phone, how I use the iPad for medical school, th that sort of stuff aimed at students. Uh, I do vlogs regularly about life as a medical student, and we also do a lot of videos about sort of very specifically aimed at medicine applicants, so BMAT, you can get interviews, that sort of stuff, if you're into that kind of thing. And very, very soon, um, we'll also be having some videos of my friends singing songs. So this channel is becoming kind of like a mishmash of lots of stuff, but I hope it's still enjoyable. I hope it's still relevant to some of you guys. And yeah, thank you so much for watching the video. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, please consider doing so. Have a lovely evening and I'll see you in the next video. Good night.